the fine art of warping minds with rhetoric. Here is one of my favourite rhetorical devices in action. Imagine you are attending a conference and one of the speakers begins her presentation by referring to one of her great rivals, a person you know she dislikes and despises. Dear friends and colleagues, she begins. Let me just say that I have no wish to bring personal animosities onto this stage. It's not my intention to waste any time listing my rival's many, many faults, either as a person or as a leader, but I don't want to dwell upon her countless costly errors and misjudgments, or to detail the lengthy recent litigation in which she found she was entirely at fault. I have said I will not waste my breath debating her repeated insults and lies, and so I will not. And so on. Now, a rhetorical device is a persuasive technique used to enhance the appeal of a message, and a particular device in this example is called paralepsis, a fine Greek word describing the art of introducing an idea while at the same time claiming you have no intention of discussing it. You may have encountered this in the everyday form of passive aggression, where someone simultaneously manages to complain while pretending they're not complaining. Please don't worry about me, they say. Don't worry about leaving me standing around while you get your errands done. I'll be fine. I love anatomizing techniques like this because it captures just how much energy and innovation people devote to persuasion without reasoning, to the business of exerting emotional pressure on others while hiding behind claims of denial, sensitivity and reasonableness. Rhetoric, the art of persuasive language, is everywhere around us and it is futile to pretend we can entirely resist or avoid it. Our best option, rather, is to become a connoisseur and a critic, to look at the means other people may use when they want to persuade us, and to ask, why are they doing this? The ancient Greeks and Romans considered rhetoric one of the highest aspirations of learning. After all, what good was knowledge or intellect if you couldn't persuade anyone to listen to you? Today, emotive persuasion is ubiquitous, just spend a few minutes on Facebook, and yet it tends to be studied only incidentally or as a subset of sales and marketing. And this, I think, is rather a shame because persuading people doesn't have to be about pulling the wool over their eyes. Indeed, perhaps the trickiest persuasive act of all is getting someone to understand exactly what you mean without leaping to premature conclusions or taking away ideas you didn't actually intend. Consider academic writing. Now, journal articles are not often held up as models of style, and yet the best and most rigorous research requires a considerable command of language if it is to be communicated clearly and without creating false impressions. Even the titles of many journal articles need to conform to rigorous guidelines in order to, for example, avoid implying conclusions in advance. Can you imagine an informed debate beginning from an article entitled, You Won't Believe What This Researcher Did With Her Dietary Protein Quality Evaluation. For a start, you would never persuade anyone to take work with a title like that seriously.